Hey guys, it's Dan Sound from Chrome Sparks here. Finally showing you guys how I play my riffs. Also, making their collective online debut is my uh, K Les Paul copy. The, uh, the finish is kind of interesting. I don't know if you can get a good glimpse of it off the light, but basically it's like a, uh, it almost reminds me of like a Koa top. It's like, it all, it's kind of a cross between Koa and uh, Maple because it, it reminds me of a Maple figuring but it has a very dark koa mahogany-esque look there. I don't know if the light can, if you can see that. <laughs> working with some, there we go. Working with some pretty crappy lighting conditions. But yeah, it's my K-Less Ball copy. Bolt-on neck, of course. And uh, it also has the figuring on the back, too. Check this out. You can see the figuring right there, kind of. This is actually my very first guitar that my dad bought me when I was just a wee lad. Um, I'm not sure if he bought it when I was born or even before I was born. It's, but in any event, it's definitely pretty gosh darn old. It actually has binding, which is quite unusual for a starter guitar. Because it's an older guitar and because he smoked a lot, the binding is very, uh, very dark ivory, almost like a tobacco stain, which looks really good on this guitar, actually. Definitely no complaints there. And it's definitely aged very well, but it, all, it really needs a lot of work. So much work needs to be done on this guitar for it to sound really good, but I gotta work with what I, you know, with what I got. And the other thing making its online debut is this, my uh, mom's infamous tiger painting that she did back in the, uh, the late 70s, uh, very early 80s, I believe. It was definitely before I was born. Yes, yeah, it's, it's held up pretty nice over the years. I mean, it's only got a little bit of fraying, but you'd have to get pretty, you know, close up in order for you to really see it. Once again, I'm, I apologize for the poor lighting conditions, but I only have one light in this entire room, so you got to deal with the, you know, crappy lighting. <laughs> I do plan on doing uh, more videos during the day so you can see everything better, but right now I'm going to start off showing you guys uh, riff idea number one, because it's, you know, riff riff. When I originally recorded Riff ID number one, I was in uh, standard tuning originally. After reviewing some of the Riff ideas, especially Riff ID number two, I decided to switch over to a drop D tuning, not just for extra heaviness, but for also just ease of recording. Enough of my blabbering, let's get on with uh, Riff ID number one. Oh yeah, more incessant blabbing. <laughs> I'm running uh, this K Les Paul copy through a Behringer Ultra Chorus, into a Digitech Metal Master, into a Johnson Reptone 15 Uber Crappy Amp. Without further blabbering, I promise this time, here is Riff ID number one. <laughs> Pardon the uh, insane feedback. The treble pickup is just acting kind of funny, so I have to rely on the neck pickup, which just barely works. I'm actually on the middle setting with the uh, treble pickup killed, so it gets kind of a kind of a weird sound. It's it's like a, a very clean neck pickup sound. So something kind of interesting. But anyway, with uh, riff idea number one, I don't know if you can see this. I can't really zoom it in because the camera is so far away. But basically, what I'm doing is if uh, six is the lowest string, then I'm on the five, four, and three. Uh, it's actually the original shape is a G power chord, so. We got G, the fifth, and G again. And what I'm doing is with my uh, middle finger, I have on the uh, the third string, the G string, but it's down a semitone. So instead of getting the regular G power chord, which is, you get uh, this. So from, so I just kind of alternate, and I use I use that shape a lot. I found in a lot of a lot of my riffs, I use just really weird chord shapings. But yeah, the basic riff goes uh, it starts off with the G, then it goes to the 
weird holding. It, it has some name. I'll have to look it up, too. Then I use the uh, low D for uh, added riffage and just for a little bit of character. So. And holding that same odd G shape, I slide back to F. Slide back to frets, and you have... Then you slide back to G, so... And then do the same pattern again. With the amp on, it sounds like this. And the second part of the riff is uh, another weird thing. I basically take that, you know, that odd chord shaping, and I move it down to uh, this would be D. So instead of a normal D power chord, it should be B. Instead of that, we get. That's the key difference maker. Where where there would be an octave, it's actually a semitone away from the octave. In this case, it would be C sharp. So we have D, the fifth, and C sharp. It has a very like minorish sound. This, I found this shape, at least where I use it, to give a very minor sound. So basically, go from moving back another whole step to C, where C should be. So. Then I move back to B, so just one fret back. But instead of holding the shape, I resume the original power chord shape. So it's an actual, you know, B power chord. And I really like the B power chord because it's right there by the uh, B octave. So, so as I tend to intentionally and unintentionally hit open strings, just because I, you know, kind of get into it and all that. The B power chord is kind of my savior because when I do that it hits octaves and it just sounds really big and super special awesome. From the weird power chord shape of C, I slide and hammer on with my pinky onto the octave. So you get an original B. Then I still keep the same power chord shape, slide back to D, then C, and then I start the pattern over again. Once again, with the amp on, it sounds like this. Then after that, slide back, you slide to slide back into your G power chord, and then you just complete the whole pattern all over. That's just basically the gist of uh, riff idea number one. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, um, feel free to leave me something in the comments. Um, Besides, uh, can you give us the tab? Just because I think giving you guys the tab is kind of pointless, because it's kind of what the whole lesson was about. It's like, I tell you what things are, and it's not very hard, it's just chords. So I'm not doing anything particularly fancy. Yeah, other than those comments, feel free to leave any other ones you'd like below, and I'll reply to you in kind, even if they're like super crappy comments like, your guitar playing sucks balls, you're off time, get a real Les Paul, you cheap bastard. Shit like that. I'll even respond. But I'll be kind of funny about it. I won't be a complete dick. Unless you are a complete, 100% genuine dick, I will reply to your comments. But if you are that 100% genuine dick, I'll just, like, straight up delete you. And maybe even block you if you're leaving me, like, hateful comments. Not really. I can take constructive criticism, honestly. I I'm a big boy. <laughs> when people just leave unnecessarily, you know, just straight-up nasty comments. It's just... I don't take the internet too seriously, but it does hurt a little bit. Yeah, if you leave me a, a super-duper nasty comment, uh, don't feel bad if I straight-up delete it. Uh, with that being said, this is the Andy Song signing off for now. I uh, hope you guys have an excellent night. What's left of it, anyway. And uh, hope to see you guys uh, later for Riff Idea number two. But, uh... Bye now.